Coming up on Wavelength, we'll show you how the Back to Basics initiative is shaping this year's budget process. The Fayette Power Project in LaGrange is adding new equipment that will help improve our Central Texas air quality. And see why LCR employees who work on the water can now do their jobs more safely. Wavelength starts right now. From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. The creation of this new river authority will help electrify rural Texas. And so today, we gather here to dedicate this mighty structure for Canada. This has been a great organization for 70 years, and it's going to be a great organization for a long time to come. Hi everyone, welcome to the May 2007 edition of Wavelength. Well, back in February, the LCRA Board of Directors instructed General Manager Joe Beal to take a back-to-basics approach in putting together the FY 2008 business plan. Beal instructed the management team to assess all programs and services, both internal and external, to ensure that they're in line with LCRA's public service mission and that they meet the needs of our customers and the communities we serve. After months of intense department-by-department department review, staff unveiled the 08 business plan at a two-day board work session in early May. The bottom line of the plan? To be less complex and more efficient. What we presented was a back-to-basics business plan. Uh, this is uh, what the board instructed us to go and develop uh, back in February. and. Um, I'm very proud to report to you that uh, we had a fantastic business plan meeting. I think the board is excited about, uh, about the plan that we gave to them. Um, and this plan does, I think, uh, start us down the road to get us back to basics. Um, we're still going to be providing the services that our customers uh, need and can afford to pay for and remain competitive and, and remain uh, reliable in the services that we provide and at the same time be able to take care of our employees, um, give them the compensation that, that they are due, the, the benefits that they need, um, and, and the training that they need to uh, perform their work. Joe, I'm very pleased in what we did. It, it showed a true partnership between the board and the staff, and I felt like that we were looking at every aspect that we could to give the maximum benefit to the people we serve, the, 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 both our customers to the ultimate citizens uh, we were very pleased of the outcome and the, uh, the, the the interaction between the board and the staff to come up with a better product and, and that should be our goal to always try to come up with a better product year after year because really that's that is that's our charge to bring the best product we can to the our customers and the people of the state of Texas and I'm very pleased of, of, of the uh, the work in fact I think it's the best budget session that we have done in the six years I've been here I, I agree with that a hundred percent and and as, as you say, the, the real winners here are the people of Texas and the people that we serve. By getting back to basics, by making things more simple, uh, we're going to be able to save dollars, and, and this budget uh, shows that. Um, plus, I think it's going to enable the staff to do uh, a better job uh, providing the, the services that our, our customers want. Well, I personally want to uh, extend our gratitude as, as the board chair of the LCRA. From top to bottom, it seems like the transparency that we have and the cooperation we have received from staff has been exemplary, and I want to compliment everybody in the entire organization for the teamwork that they did to, to present what we've, we've come up with today. Thank you very much. Ray, thank you. Appreciate it. A lot of the work done by LCRA employees happens on and around the water. From maintaining canals in the rice irrigation districts to water quality sampling in Matagorda Bay. From maintaining navigation buoys on Lake Buchanan to LCRA rangers patrolling the Highland Lakes. We're identifying the hazards involved with this job, uh, working on the water. As always, safety is the primary concern with any job or working environment at LCRA. This crew from Water Surface Management spends a majority of their time on the water. They oversee the dock safety program, 
marina permitting, buoy maintenance, and they remove navigational hazards from the lakes. We found this dock floating out in the middle of Lake Travis. It was unanchored, blowing across the lake. We've tied it off, anchored it so that it's out of the main body. It's not a navigation hazard. Two new devices are now being used by LCRA, which makes this kind of work much safer. First is something called the Virtual Lifeline. This is the Virtual Lifeline unit that attaches to each one of us. Um, it's got a little IC chip in here that all it has to do is uh, be submersed in the water for a split second and it cuts off the engines. And the siren goes off. We patrol out here, usually we're one person to a boat. We're out here in all extreme weathers. We're dealing with multiple subjects at a time and if for any reason we get knocked into the water, thrown into the water, it's a great way to stop the engine. The second safety tool is the Auto Inflate Personal Flotation Device, or PFD. We don't let anybody get on our boat without having a life jacket. We always make sure that we have extra auto inflatable PFDs for everybody that's with us. So, with the help of our friend Joe here, we'll demonstrate both of these safety devices in action. The engine was killed immediately, and the PFD inflated on contact with the water. It worked exactly like it was supposed to. It inflated quickly. He never went completely underwater. You have inflation behind the neck and in the front of your body so that whenever you fall in the water, it automatically flips you over so that your head is facing up. Memorial Day kicks off the recreational boating season, and with the level of Lake Travis back up, officials are expecting a very busy summer. This will be the second summer for LCRA's award-winning water safety outreach campaign called Nobody's Waterproof. The idea is to educate boaters and swimmers, primarily men ages 18 to 34, and help them change behaviors that could create a life-threatening situation. These crews, all of whom are certified lifeguards or water safety instructors, will head out to the lakes on busy weekends with contests and giveaways to interact one-on-one -on -one with boaters, swimmers, and picnickers. Due to the success of the campaign last year, Texas Parks and Wildlife was very excited to uh, take this campaign statewide, which we will be doing this year. Boats uh, similar to this one will be on lakes near Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio, as well as here on Lake Travis and the Highland Lakes. We have thousands of boaters that come out every year and with the wonderful campaign the Nobody's Waterproof, we really encourage everybody to wear their life jackets, be aware of your surroundings, be courteous to others, and just really pay attention to what you're doing out there. And most importantly, be responsible about your drinking. Don't drink and drive. In the 1800s, farmers and ranchers in the Texas Hill Country used wind power to bring water up from underground, and they captured precious rainwater in cisterns to help sustain life in this often harsh environment. Today, as the population continues to grow and development reaches farther out into rural areas, rainwater harvesting is once again becoming very popular as an alternative to drilling expensive wells. When LCRA employee Paul Webb built his home in Hayes County back in 1992, his family made the decision to design a rainwater harvesting system into the plans. When we added uh, two children to our family um, a few years ago, uh, we added a second 10,000 gallon tank. So now we have 20,000 gallons of storage. Plus we made an addition onto the house to add some bedrooms and a garage that we'd always wanted. So we doubled the collection area on our roof so after we made those changes, we haven't had any problems with running out of water or having any kind of a shortage. Paul's family of six uses rainwater for all of their household needs. Here's how the system works. Rainwater is collected from this 6,000 square foot metal roof into gutters that flow into two feeder pipes connected to these two 10,000 gallon tanks. The water goes through a sediment filter, then it goes through a carbon filter, then it goes through this stainless steel cylinder and it circulates around an ultraviolet light designed to kill any uh, bacteria in the water and then it goes to the house. 
Paul has the water tested periodically at LCRA's environmental lab. East County rainwater tastes great. LCRA's new home for emergency operations, the Redbud Center, is nearing completion. Green building elements such as recycled building materials, high efficiency lighting, heating and cooling have been designed into this facility. Perhaps the most significant green feature of the Redbud Center is its rainwater collection system, which has four very prominent cisterns with a capacity of 31,000 gallons. Right here at the entrance of the site, we have this large aqueduct that you would drive underneath and very visible and prominent is the anchor of the entrance of this site will be 11,000 gallon cistern to collect the rainwater. This system, which also collects air conditioner condensate, will supply water to flush all of the toilets and urinals in the building. It will feed water to the landscape water features and also provide some irrigation water. Raw lake water will be used for the majority of the irrigation. It is estimated that this facility will use 50% less treated city water thanks to these innovative conservation measures. LCRA is also using rainwater for landscape irrigation at McKinney Ruffs in Bastrop County and at Cooper Farm in Fayette County. We have a 10,000 gallon tank behind me and we collect water off this equipment storage building which is about 6,000 square feet which means we can collect about 3,600 gallons of water from every one inch rain we get. And we use the water out of our storage tank to water the plants in the greenhouse. We do a lot of propagation of native plants in there and we use the rainwater to water those. And we also use it to water the wildscape area located in front of the meeting barn. The state of Texas has recently put together guidelines for homeowners wanting to use rainwater for indoor purposes. The state of Texas has a sales tax exemption on all rainwater harvesting equipment and that can include gutters that you install to feed into your rainwater harvesting system. So that can be a significant savings. There really is a significant untapped potential for rainwater harvesting in, in Texas, especially in commercial use. So, from a simple rain barrel to a 20,000 gallon sole source system, rainwater harvesting is becoming very popular from urban neighborhoods to hill country ranches. People who've been on rainwater systems, who have rainwater systems in their homes, never want to go back. They bring their own bottled water with them when they travel. They love it because it doesn't gunk up their pipes with calcium and their clothes are nicer and their hair feels nicer and they're total converts. It's almost like they've, they've seen the light once they've gotten rainwater in their homes. The three coal-fired generating units at the Fayette Power Project in LaGrange provide reliable, affordable electricity to both the City of Austin and LCRA's 43 wholesale electric customers. Construction on Units 1 and 2 was completed in 1980, and they are owned jointly by LCRA and Austin Energy. Unit 3 started up in 1988 and is owned solely by LCRA. These three units have a combined generating capacity of 1,730 megawatts. That's enough electricity to meet the peak demand for 325,000 average size homes. The landscape at FPP is once again changing very rapidly with the addition of new emissions control equipment called scrubbers for units one and two. Because it was built more recently, unit three already has a scrubber which is designed to remove up to 97% of the sulfur dioxide, or SO2, from the furnace exhaust gases. Western coal from Wyoming is the primary fuel source here at FPP. This coal is burned in a furnace lined with water-filled pipes. The water is boiled, creating steam, which is delivered to the turbine at 2,400 pounds per square inch. This extreme pressure spins the turbine at 3,600 revolutions per minute, creating our final product, electricity. When coal is burned, certain byproducts are produced. First, the heavy ash left over from the combustion process falls to the bottom of the furnace. Today, this bottom ash is recycled and used as a road base material. The finer ash particles, which travel with the hot gases toward the stacks, are captured by this electrostatic precipitator. This fly ash, which used to be buried as waste, is now used in creating cement. The hot exhaust gases continue on to the scrubber, 
which removes the sulfur dioxide by spraying a mixture of limestone and water. This scrubbing process also creates a usable byproduct. We actually uh, sell that product through our marketer, uh, Mineral Resource Technologies, and they sell that to uh, concrete companies uh, to actually goes into making part of the Portland cement. So we end up reducing the sulfur dioxide out of the air. We end up with a byproduct that we can sell uh, that brings us some revenue, and so it's really a, a fantastic uh, uh, deal for our environment. Foundation work continues for the two scrubber modules and the new stack, which will begin its climb to a height of 525 feet in August. One of our challenges on this project was to get out ahead of the rest of the country in the procurement process to procure um, materials, design, engineering firms, contractors. We were lucky in a sense that we were able to secure the last chimney until 2008. There are only three chimney vendors in the U.S. that uh, can actually meet our requirements here. Adding these scrubbers is the latest step in a long-term plan to improve the performance of the plant in both efficiency and environmental quality. Again, it's a commitment on LCRA and the city of Austin's part to be a, a, a clean, coal-fired plant. This scrubber project and new chimney are scheduled to be complete in the fall of 2008. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. We'll look forward to seeing you again next time.